Okay, so um, from the title of my presentation, Selling the States, we're not talking about selling the United States. <laughs> we're talking about how is, it, how is it marketed? How is the United States marketed um, as a study abroad destination? And the research, this part of the research is a small part um, of a much larger project. I work as the deputy director of our International Exchange Centre and we've been looking at why are the student numbers going overseas declining so much, particularly at our institution. So we have, um, we have a small student body of approximately 3,000 students. Uh, from the previous presentation this morning, the presenter was talking about Uchimuki. And we've kind of found that there is this type of uchimuki, kind of inward-looking um, mentality to a lot of the students on our campus. So these student numbers have rapidly declined in the last uh, five to six years. So we've been looking at why, why is this happening? What images are the students having of what study abroad is? Um, how can we do a better job at promoting what study abroad is? What programs and policies can we develop? Um, and at the moment, we've started uh, a brand new ICP program, an International Careers program, where it's mandatory for the students to study abroad as part of their course, and we fund the course. We're kind of that desperate to get the students out. Um, as well as that, we also have an internal program, which is Academic Language Learning and Professional Skills, the ALPS program. Two of the students from that program are here now. Um, and the aim of that course is to encourage the students to not only uh, study abroad while they're in university, but go on to graduate school afterwards or work for international companies. So we're, look, we're, we're making policies internally, um, but we're also looking outside to see what is going on, um, how can we improve our situation. And this part of the research I'm going to talk about today is looking at marketing and the marketing of uh, internationalization and the marketing particularly of the United States. So, as we know, the numbers of students study, studying overseas are decreasing. And I'm taking this um, from a marketing perspective. I'm looking at, like, at it from the idea that the student is a consumer, and they're consuming a product when they go to study abroad. The question is, what is that product? What is the product that the students are, are buying or purchasing when they study abroad? And the traditional marketing models puts the project product right in the center here. And it's something that the, sh the, the consumer needs. And then as we go out, we start to look at what the consumer wants. So just, just briefly, because there's only a few people here, what do we think the students need if the product is study abroad? Yeah, what do they English. Need? They need English. They need English. They need an alternative. They need an alternative route or an alternative map. So what we found from the beginning of this research was that what we thought the students needed was very different to what the students thought <laughs> that they needed. And there is this big gap. So we've been looking at why is this? And this part of the research is looking at the images that the students get from study abroad material. And how does that have an impact upon how they think and perceive study abroad? So looking at... So literature and students' motivations to travel, you can see from the list things like personal growth, search for security and place, academic growth, social interaction and acceptance, relaxation, escapism, and just for a sense of novelty. Those are the main reasons coming out of the literature as to why students uh, travel and are motivated, not specifically to study abroad, but to travel, looking at tourism. And thinking about the study abroad through the marketing mix, the product is what is very difficult to, um, to ascertain. The price, we know, is a very inhibitive factor in Japan. As we heard this morning, uh, the amount of funding towards students going out, um, outbound students, has decreased. Um, we're putting a lot more focus and a lot more of our funding on students coming in to the universities. The place, with place I refer to the distribution point, where we are selling these programs. And they're usually being sold from the study abroad centers, the international exchange centers within the university. Although, now they are coming under a great amount of competition from outside agencies that are trying to get into the student body to entice them away on different types of programs. 
So this this distribution point now is a very um, a very contentious issue. Promotion, looking at the way that it's promoted through using uh, past students and past student voices when they've been overseas, using marketing materials in handbooks, um, pamphlets that are produced in Japan and externally, websites, social media, lots of other different uh, promotion channels. Partnerships with universities. We used to have very uh, friendly relationships with universities overseas where we tried to build strong, long-lasting relationships. But now with the impact of uh, organizations like JSAF, who basically set up, they're the middleman between the university in Japan and the university overseas, these middlemen agencies are now doing a lot of the partnership work that we used to do. Um, the positioning, how we position our school, how we position within the global rankings, how we position our product in the market. The people, who is selling the study abroad programs? Is it coming from the teachers, encouraging the students to go, their parents? Is it from their uh, international exchange centre staff? Who are the people who are connecting and in encouraging students to go overseas? And then planning. Uh, we do have problems with long-term vision and long-term strategy planning particularly in private universities when we have rotations of staff, we have rotations of um, senior management teams, and that causes uh, a lot of planning issues and problems. So tourism marketing in Japan, uh, the research says that the tourism marketing main kind of focus is dependency, a dependency culture, that Japanese uh, rely on the package tours, relying on the, um, the pre-defined um, predefined uh, programs and not so much of the independent traveler. But this is changing now, as you know, through websites such as Expedia, um, these uh, types of agencies where people can go and do travel on their own. So we're seeing that shift with the students as well. The students are not necessarily dependent on our programs, they can start to look elsewhere on their own. Um, and so why do stu Japanese students in particular st uh, do study abroad? Well, this research is from Asao Kwanyano and Kobayashi to escape from Japan, this sense of escapism, a desire for change, intercultural experience, language improvement, pleasure, and for personal reasons. And the personal reasons, uh, that study is related to um, female students. Um, and those students, the female students, uh, maybe didn't want to settle down and get married. And wanted, it was partly an escapism reason, but it was a little bit more specific. So I had two research questions um, for this particular part of the project, but there is a much wider section. And this one is, I was looking at how do images in study abroad, promotional materials, sell the United States? And what can we learn from this study about how better to market study abroad programs? So what did I do? Well, I took a three-step uh, analysis using this framework from Canton and Santos, 2009, um, and they did a content, semiotic, and discourse analysis of study abroad brochures uh, for American students going overseas. And my research took the same framework, but I looked at promotional materials that were made in Japan for Japanese students promoting Japan, uh, study abroad in the US. And I selected uh, a selection of uh, 25 magazines and websites. And from that, I took 150 images uh, of America study abroad that came out of these uh, brochures. And I conducted the three-step analysis. And what I'm going to do today is just present some of the findings from that and explain how I'm going to use that to go forward. Um, the reason I chose pictures were that they do represent the way that we understand the world. Uh, they are the things that catch the students' attention while they're reading the booklet. We know they sit and flick through, but maybe they don't read the words. These images are going into them. So what did I find out? Well, there are five kind of explanatory devices. The first one, sense of identity, sense of place, relaxation and escapism, and social interaction and academic growth. So the first one, identity, kind of unsurprisingly, 80% of the images included female images. 
and the number of males represented were, is extremely low. And the number of Japanese males that go overseas to study is also, extreme, is also extremely low anyway. So we can already see there's no kind of role model in a lot of these magazines. 89% um, were in their 20s, which is unsurprising, but we also have a growing number of students that are mature students, and there was no representation at all of a mature student. 65% uh, were white, 17% Asian, um, but the picture on, the, the, uh, on your, your right of this gentleman here, this is a teacher. So the images of teachers were predominantly male, almost 95%. They were always wearing a suit, <laughs> they were always very smartly dressed, and sitting or acting in this type of pose. Very casual, relaxed, um, but still quite formal. So there was no representation really of an Asian teacher or um, an African-American teacher, there was no other representation. This was the primary image that the students were exposed to. Secondly, the sense of place. 20% um, of the images represented a classroom type situation, which for study abroad, to me, seemed a little low. 14% um, showed campuses, and the campuses were big, huge, green, flourishing campuses. They had very, very traditional buildings, usually red brick. They were uh, beautifully man manicured in landscape gardens. Um, and the classrooms, in comparison, were very, very basic classrooms. Uh, very, very little technology on show in the, in the classrooms. No iPads, no computers, just very simple desks and chairs. Um, and the, the the classroom images were quite, quite sad, actually, in comparison to these beautiful exterior images. 24% of the images contained pictures of the beach. <laughs> and so um, these are even for, for... What I found interesting was the juxtaposition. When I did start to look at the text as well, you would have a picture of the beach next to a description of a university in Central or Mid-America, which is very, very far away from the so it's this concept that you know we, we can see this sense of place and escapism and uh, and that's what we're looking for. Sorry, could I just have what time I have to finish? Um, I forgot to say. Still, there is a little bit of time. Oh, how, how much? Um, about ten, um, five minutes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Eleven percent were tourist landmarks, and again, these were your regular Empire State Building, um, Golden Gate Bridge. Again, put in locations in the handbook where they made no sense to the text that was, was there. Um, and then lots of generic images, uh, yellow cabs, yellow taxi cabs, um, lots of um, pictures of potatoes and potato, sorry, potato chips and popcorn and that kind of thing at a park or at a baseball field. So very, very odd images uh, merged together. Um, the idea of relaxation and escapism, 66% of images had the sky as the main focus of the page. The huge kind of blue cloudy sky with just students, generic students looking into the sky. So this I found particularly interesting, that it, it was significant to see that, that many images of the sky it was seeking a sense of relaxation, a sense of escaping, something out of this world, um, something aspirational. But something that I was really, I kind of thought, wow, that's, what is that about? <laughs> then social interaction. 15% had images of students chatting, uh, usually sat around a circle where the, what I would assume would be the American students sitting kind of higher up and maybe the students looking up at them, having a casual conversation. Nothing, not, not a very relaxing uh, type of conversation. 20% had students reading alone, sitting and reading, uh, reading a book, reading a magazine, uh, but very solitary type of uh, engagement. 3%, only 3% showed some type of host family relationship, talking to their host family or in a home situation, or a dinner situation. And there was a significant amount 
of uh, images that showed relationships between the opposite sex. And it was usually uh, an Asian, thank you very much, an Asian woman and a non, uh, and a non-Asian man, a Caucasian man, uh, holding hands on the beach, sitting together in class, looking quite lovingly at each other. So maybe sex does sell. <laughs> but um, this image as well is one that was taken from the books. This is uh, this is a group of very happy Japanese students, maybe I'm assuming, all holding hands. Um, because they're very happy to be studying abroad. Uh, academic growth, uh, less than 1% showed any images that were connected to graduation and the idea that uh, what you are doing as a study abroad is for your final goal to graduate. 11% uh, were in workplace environments. We can see that matches the shift in um, the number of students that are doing overseas internships now. Um, and there is a lot more focus on working and using English as opposed to just study. 8% were studying with technology, as I mentioned before, and 29% they were in, when they were studying, it was a studying pose. So they were at the desk, just about to write. So what does all this kind of mean? From looking at the bigger picture, um, there's a large focus on social interaction and relaxation in the study abroad uh, promotional materials. That's the, the image that the students are getting from these brochures. And a very small focus on traditional academic aspects and what study in study abroad is. And actually, intercultural uh, aspects too. I didn't see, uh, I expected to see a lot more intercultural um, images, but they, but they were very, very um, Asian heavy when it was a group of uh, Asian group of students together. So going back to the idea of the products and the needs and the wants, uh, after I looked more into the marketing uh, literature, I came across this uh, the theory from Ihara.